Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Uh, he is coming again. Jesus is coming. Do you believe that? Now, it may be a day like this. I thought when I got this picture, I thought, wow. It may be a day like this. You know, set me out on the clouds. The king's going to have a song like that. It may be a day, a cloudy day, maybe a clear day, maybe a stormy day, it may be a snowy day. But the next thing on our important calendar is the fact that the Lord is coming back. We sort of mentioned it last week, and I'll tell you, say this real quick. I believe, according to what the Bible says, that all this is happening in the world. This is a test, people. This is a test. The whole world bowed down to the World Health Organization. When the Antichrist comes in, they're going to say the word and everybody's going to bow down. How many people do you suppose if they made an announcement today and brought a big train into Bloomington and said, if you get on this train, we'll take you to a place where there's no coronavirus. How many people do you think would get on that train? I'm serious. A bunch. A bunch. You know what they did? The Nazis did with the Jews? They did the exact same thing. You're just coming here. we got a place for you. Yeah, gas chambers. Gas chambers. Well, all this is happening, if, if you're not paying attention, you better wake up. Because I believe this is just a test. The Lord's coming back. So Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready for as such a, an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Is that a good verse? You better be ready. We prepare for all kinds of other things, do we not? We prepare for all kinds of other things. We're going to have company, and we prepare, we get out the best china, we get out our best dishes, and we make our best desserts, and we fix everything up fancy. If the Lord was coming, you'd do that for Him, wouldn't you? If you knew Jesus was coming to your house for lunch, would you fix everything up? You sure would. You would dust everything, you would fix it all up. Uh, just to let, to let you know, so we just got this cough. It's not anything. It's from from. Oh, that was right. Loretta's time. So we said she's had that cough. All right, Loretta, it's your fault. She's had that for months, so don't worry about that. And so we said she's had it. And it's related with. So is related with her with all of her stuff she has. So don't worry about that. But the scriptures teach us that Jesus is coming again. Now I'm going to tell you if, and I don't always express my feelings, but I'm getting, I'm excited about what's happening. Not the fact that you have to, everybody has to wear masks and we have to do all this stuff. I'm excited that the Bible is being fulfilled. Yes. Prophecy is being fulfilled under our eyes, in front of our noses. We can smell it. It's coming. So, the promise says that it's coming. Of course, Jesus Many times promised that he would come again. In John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, I've quoted these verses so many times in my Father's house, so many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Uh, if I go and prepare a place for you, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He didn't say, I might. When Randy, when our kids grew up, if we told Randy on the, a week from Tuesday, we might go to Dairy Queen and get an ice cream. A week from Tuesday, if we didn't go, he had a cow. You told us that we were going to get an ice cream. You said we might. That means we will. I mean, he got upset about it. He doesn't fulfill those things all the time with his kids now, but Randy got upset. If you said you were going to do something, you might do something. Well, Jesus didn't say, I might come back. He said, I'm coming back. How can anyone doubt the Scriptures? The Bible is true, because if it's not, then God is a liar. Let God be true and every man what? A liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. So he plainly said, I will, not maybe, might, think about it, come again. The angelic messengers promised that he was going to come again. Paul, he promised that Jesus was going to come again. He mentions it, the event, listen to this. In every chapter of 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Paul mentions Jesus is coming again. Guess what Paul was looking forward to? What was Paul looking forward to? Jesus coming again. He knew it could happen. He thought it was going to happen in his life. 
both, uh, both books, every chapter, he mentions something about Jesus coming in. So what's the signs of his coming? We're seeing it be fulfilled now. We need to see the signs of his coming. We don't, you know, we don't mean that he, that somebody can set a date. It simply means that things are falling into place. The Bible says there's going to be a falling away. We have seen that. There are so many people who have fallen away from the gospel, and in that I'm talking about even mainstream, quote, unquote, keep that in quote, unquote, preachers. They have strayed away from the truth. They have strayed away from the Word of God. They have presented their own ideas, their own thoughts. Whatever it is, they have given their own ideas, and you can, you can go to these, some of these big churches. they got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. But you listen to them, they're not preaching the truth. And don't tell me, well, they're pretty good on most things. If you keep listening to them, you're going to believe the hogwash that they're presenting. Am I right? We can be brainwashed easy. We can get brainwashed easy. We can be told what to do so easy. So-called religious leaders. And there's so many, been so many over the years. A time when they're going to endure, the Bible says they're going to endure sound doctrine, kind of itching ears. They're going to, culture are going to offer up all kinds of ideas and people are going to find them, and they do. Religious leaders, how many in our lifetime have you seen have people follow them to their death? Because they say, I'm Jesus. And I'm coming back. David Koresh in Waco, Texas. He told those people, I heard him, he stood up and he said, I'm Jesus. In the flesh. And we're all going to die together. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to save every one of you. And they all followed him. Now we may not follow somebody to our death physically, but we got to make sure we don't follow somebody to our death spiritually. You know, these hard, this, this pandemic has been hard on everybody. It's been hard on everybody. We've all had to go through this. Believe it or not, it's, it's been hard on me too. I'm not perfect. It's been hard. You know, the preachers are expected to encourage everybody. You know, we, we have to keep everybody going, keep everybody's spirits up. You know, what would you think if I just walked around like this? Oh, me. What would you think? You know what? Eventually you'd start doing what would you start doing? You'd be walking around just like this. Oh, me. I can't do it. You know? I know. Somebody's got to strike me up. Um, but it's been hard on everybody. But it's exciting. Perilous times are here. So I have the question. Does it sound like today? Of course it is. Lovers of their own selves. Covetousness. The Bible says boasters, proud, Blasphemers, you know, they're everywhere. I saw yesterday a woman had a shirt on. A feminist. You know what her shirt said? I have had 20 abortions. Oh my. How sad is our world? Oh, and she's bragging about it. Oh, now I understand. Is one sin any different than another? All of sin comes short of the glory of God, amen? She's going to have to answer that. Anybody else got to answer for their sin? But lovers of pleasure, lovers of themselves, her shirt said, I've had 20 abortions. Wow. My mother is 79 years old. And she's had to walk with a walker. And if you don't believe me, you talk to my wife and you talk to my brother and you talk to my sisters. If I walked in and had a shirt on that, like that, I would get slapped in the face. You think I'm kidding? My mom would do that. <laughs> to brag about that. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You talk about the world going away from the Lord. The Jews are looking forward to the Lord. Ezekiel, I'm not going to read these, but the Jews are going to be hated and they're going to be invaded. The preacher I was listening to on the way to church this morning was talking about just about the same thing. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 39. Write it down. Read it later. The Jews 
Everybody hates that little country. Everybody hates those people. So what about the need for preparation of the Lord coming? Like I said, we have prepared things. We have company, we prepare things. And I told you before, but the preacher comes over for lunch and the mom says, as a little boy, will you pray for our lunch? And he said, I don't know how to pray. He said, just pray like I did this morning. And he bowed his head and said, Dear Lord, why in heaven's name did I invite the preacher over for lunch today? <laughs> Kids listen. They pay attention. But she prepared and she had a lunch. Of course, we sang Jesus saves. Salvation is for the lost. And at one time, we were all there. Uh, to be saved, of course, we have to accept Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior. Some have made it a difficult thing. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 10.9 and 10 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. You know, salvation is simple. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. I skipped that one. Um, we, it, 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 but God committed the love toward us, and then while we we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we're all sinners. Now, we don't like that. We don't like to be called sinners. We like to think of ourselves as good people. We look in the mirror, and we like to say, well, I'm a pretty good person. My hair may be a mess. My nose may be crooked. You know, I may have to wear this mask. I still think the best one was the guy said, I never thought I could go to the bank and ask for money if I had a mask on. <laughs> they got extra security in all kinds of places. They got people watching to make sure you have masks. I don't know if it's true or not. That thing on Facebook yesterday, it said, according to the Constitution, you cannot, because of the Disabilities Act, you cannot refuse service to somebody if they're not wearing a mask or not doing something you say they, they, they do. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but somebody pushes it. Some places are requiring you to have a mask in when you go in. That's fine. You go in a restaurant eat, you're not going to have a mask on unless you got a hole in it, you know, unless you got one. Somebody had one the other day, had a whole mouth. What good does a mask do if they had a mouth hole cut out of it, made that way, sewed that way so they could eat? Well, if you're going to have it open all the time, why have the mask on? Whatever. So there we those who need to be saved. We have to accept Jesus Christ. And what a sad day it will be for man, for many when they face the Lord unprepared, as I said again. There are so many things in life we prepare for. Why well, I just graduated high school. He prepared for it for four years. You know, you prepare, you do this for four years. I'm told back in the old days in England, when you went to theological school, you went for three years. You had one test at the end. Now, I understand when you're younger, you can remember a lot of stuff, but you had one test at the end. If you failed it, you had to take the whole three years over again. Think about that. That'd be a pain, wouldn't it? So all these graduations, Wyatt prepared four years for this high school graduation. He was able to graduate. The college students prepared four years, five years, I don't mean, for, for their graduations. And even though it wasn't a live graduation, they were able to graduate. Preparation. You prepared to come to church this morning. As every Sunday, you ought to prepare to come to church. Get up. Your attitude before you come makes a difference. You know, look forward to coming to the house of the Lord, as we do. We look forward to coming and fellowshipping with one another. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. There are so many people who think they're ready to go to heaven. They think they're good people. There are some good... I know some good people who are not Christians. They're good as far as morals, as far as their lifestyles. They'll do things for people. Um, but that doesn't get them saved. The Bible says if you accept me as your Savior, 
If you believe in your heart that I can, that it will save you, I will save you and I will change you. And then there's the obedience for the saved. Real quickly here, every Christian has an assignment. We all have homework. How many of you have enjoyed homework when you were in school? Raise your hand if you enjoyed homework. I want to see how many liars are here. Not one hand. Why? Sydney wanted to raise her hand to cover her eyes. <laughs> Nobody raised their hand and said, I enjoyed homework. Why not? You probably had to do it, but you didn't enjoy it. Now, as Christians, we all have an assignment. We have homework. Every day, of course, we're supposed to live for the Lord. We're supposed to witness. Matthew chapter 13, verses 35, 36, 37. Watch ye therefore, for you know not what, what the master of the house, when he cometh. Every, he said, even or at midnight, at the, at the, at the, as the cock crowing, or in the morning, you don't know when he's coming, lest suddenly you find you sleeping. And what I say to you, Lord, unto all, watch. Your homework is to watch. Yes. Now, not just to stand there. Don't go outside. And I told you before, we did this at school. Every month or two, we, me and about five other guys, we, outside the cafeteria, was 500 foot tall radio tower from the school radio station. So we'd walk out of the cafeteria, and we just stood there looking up like this. We'd all just look around like this. And before long, there'd be 30 or 40 people. I'm not kidding. There'd be 30 or 40 people. They're all there looking up. And we walked away. And we turn around and look, and there's all these people that are still looking up there. I'm serious. <laughs> They're trying to find out what we're watching. I'm not saying you've got to go outside and just stand there and look up. But we need to be ready. His house is a local church, and every Christian ought to be a member of the church and ought to be looking. They ought to be a worker. Yes. Jesus gave his work assignment yes. to the local church. This last slide. The Great Commission was given to us as Christians, to the local church. It says what? Go! Amen. It says go! It says go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now we can't be everywhere at once. We're able to support missionaries. We're able to help others. We're able to have other ministries that can do what we can't. But I found an illustration as we close to show how much God's love and how much love, how important it is. The story was told of a man who, and it didn't say where it was, he was condemned to die. And he was going to be condemned to die at the time of the, the next morning when the bell rang at the chapel the man was going to die. Well, the guy went and he pulled the rope. And when he pulled the rope, there was nothing but a dull sound. He pulled it again, nothing but a dull sound. He pulled it a couple more times. And they say that he was nothing but a dull sound, so he climbed up the ladder to the bell tower. And when he got to the bell tower, on the clanger was hanging a woman. Her body was all bloodied and bruised. She was the girlfriend of the soldier who was about to die. She was willing to sacrifice everything she was and had so that that man could live. So that bell wouldn't ring. And they say when the mayor or the leader, whoever it was, it, says when, it, said, it, it said when the ruler learned of the sacrifice, he pardoned the soldier. Guess what? When you ask Jesus to come into your heart and God the Father learned of the sacrifice of the Son, you got pardoned. Amen. Am I right? Amen. That's right. Two amens. Amen. Did you get pardoned? Yes. That's better. You're awake. Somebody gave their life, their bloody body, so you could live. So why not get excited that Jesus is coming? No, I don't want this thing to hang on, this pandemic. They're saying the effects of it now, they're saying it could last for years. I'm going to say this, I won't say anything else about it. It's going to last till the election. Never mind. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Let's look forward to it. Let's get excited about it.
We ought to be excited about it. One day we get a new home. One day we get to leave this world and the devil and his minions and all those who have, they can have this world. They can have all your stuff. They can have our houses. They can have our cars. They can have our clothes. They can have our masks. They can have everything. Keep it. Because I don't want it. I'm getting a glorified body. I'm getting a new body. I'm going to get some of my hair back. Jeff, I noticed the back there you're catching up with me. A little bit back there. It happens with age, you know. I blame mine on my wife and my son. The youngest one. Got to blame it on somebody. I uh, wouldn't have anything to do with genetics or anything like that. Just because my dad was half bald. But I get a new body. I get hair. I don't have to wear glasses in heaven. Tell me there won't be no Lyme disease in heaven. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> there won't be any cancer in heaven. I'll close with this. I read this morning. I read the other day that the guy who worked in the funeral home, he said since March 12th, there have been no deaths of anything but COVID. Every death certificate they've gotten has been COVID. He said the heart attacks have been healed, strokes have been healed, cancer has been healed, nobody's died of anything but COVID. And that's a miracle, isn't it? Think about it. No sicknesses <laughs> except COVID. There ain't going to be nothing in heaven. There will be none of that in heaven. We get to go to heaven forever. It's already paid for. And Jesus is coming again. Let's stand and close in a word of prayer. And then we're going to have our business meeting. Father, we want to thank you for your blessings. I look here among the crowd that are here, and as far as I know, every one of us are saved. For those who couldn't be here today, Lynette's got a sore throat, so we pray for them, for, for her. Diana, with this poison ivy, Lord, just heal this stuff up. Chrissy, these families of these who have lost loved ones, Father, devastating. So devastating. We need you, Lord. If there's ever a time in the world's history that we need you, we need you now, abundantly. So bless us, use us, guide us, direct us. Bless our business meeting, bless our day. Father, we want to know, we want you to know that we love you and we're looking forward to your coming again and all God's people said.